This is the Convergence Forum of the International Intercommunalist Convergence. And we are a revolutionary movement, international. And we have with us today, Kara uh, of the not so great Britain, myself of Montreal, Quebec, so-called Canada, and Red Wasp of Europe, Andrew of Tennessee. Okay, so we've well, pretty... Belgium, that made up country in Europe. <laughs> what was it? The British that come up with Belgium? I can't remember. Is it's... there any non-made up country here in Europe? <laughs> okay, that's fair. I mean, like, what's it? The fucking, you know, but y you know what I mean? <laughs> it's a little more made up than is... some of the ones around it. <laughs> it's, it's, Belgium is, is different, you know, than another, the other nation states of Europe because it is a confederation. The Walloons and the Flems, Flemish uh, nationalities. Okay. Okay. So you have two different nationalities in the same state which is not a nation state because there's two nationalities and they're about equal. So one cannot sort of, you know, trump the other. So, you know, like it turns into what should be called a confederation. So it is not even a nation state. It's that much like monarchy. Switzerland, you know, Switzerland too. You know, when Rousseau talked about, you know, uh, a, a federation or the federal principle, he meant, and the only example he gave was Switzerland, you know, which is not a federation. It's a confederation. Like Canada is a confederation. And in French, we see... We say silicon. <laughs> silicon. I mean, Switzerland is more means, like you know, a city like it's state. nonsense. It's a fake. You know, like it's not a real federation, and yeah. that's why Quebec wants to leave, basically. You know, but you know, the the working class are afraid to leave because they're afraid of losing their unemployment insurance, basically. But that can be settled. You know, so we'll see okay. what happens here in Quebec, anyway. I think here in Belgium, things are are, are almost um, the opposite from um, uh, Quebec and and, and Canada. Because it's it's the extreme right wing um, Flemish, so Flanders, the Dutch speaking part where I am from, is um, richer than the, the 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 southern French speaking part Wallonie, and it's yeah. the uh, the the most reactionary uh, elements of the the Flemish bourgeoisie who want uh, more separatism. I don't think they really want to become completely independent, but mm -hmm. they want to get rid of the 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 the, the French speaking uh, more radical, more uh, left-wing uh, trade unionists, so uh -huh. they can have a more right-wing uh, policy oh. here. In, in I have place. seen interests amongst some right-wingers over there with been merging with the, the Nederdeutsch. Yes, um, yeah, so that... for example. But but that's really the neo-Nazis. They they have all kind of um, pseudo-medieval fan medieval fantasies about... Oh, my God. Uh, 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 national essentialisms that, of course, uh -huh. Flemish. We 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 are we are the best race. Oh, we we can't use the word race anymore. We're we're the best nationality, but then we're almost the same as the Dutch, so we should go together. And then we're also Germans because that's what Hitler told us. And I mean, um, <laughs> and you also get and he's still that quite is... popular in many of the these Flemish nationalist circles. The 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 the, the Austrian with the mustache is still like. Um, they they aren't able to 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 express it openly, but they're still very. It's actually um, the movement is made uh, of of second or third generation collaborationists from the Second World War. Uh -huh. Um, interestingly, uh, the Mustache Man he was actually Bavarian. His family just ended up in Austria after the separation, and um, his family was torn. His father was like pro Austrian, him and his mother were like pro German. Great dinner table. Uh, but the uh, what's it um, with the Dutch? Um, they're like it too. Uh, the the Nederdeutsch they love uh, like white supremacy. I mean, they're yes. also again careful not to use the word race, but they look at you a certain way, like um, um, uh, half magic, uh, half uh, Celt, half Anglo that I know well used to know. They went there. Uh, they were just passing through on their way back to Australia, and um, they while they were there. They had a like they were getting looked up and down all nasty and they ended up with fucking some pretty fucking ruthless uh, food poisoning while they were there. And I wouldn't half put it past the Dutch to fucking because this was sushi and it's mm -hmm. so easy to fucking misprepare sushi and fucking kill someone. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't put it half past them that that was done on purpose like the D Dutch. It's 
it's worse than England in some ways for racism. And people might think that's kind of wild because you think people think of like the Netherlands as this like little country and all that. And it's like, yeah, it's the yeah. like, richest city in Europe yeah. is in Netherlands. Yeah. It's a pretty powerful uh, imperialist in certain ways. <laughs> it's just a small but one. It, it yeah, used it to be in South in... Africa, South African colony, you know, was founded by the Calvinists. Um, it, it used to be both here in Flanders as, and, and in the Netherlands, a, a, a kind of very polite racism where uh, um, you, you could be white supremacist, but don't say it out loud. And 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 and, and, and um, this has changed in the last few decades. And there's a new generation openly racist. Uh. And, uh, uh, so that there's a, a new young generation of fascists who go to music festivals uh, chanting things like the Congo is ours. So Congo used to be a colony of Belgium. Yeah. Um, actually uh, uh, chanting uh, uh, about chopping hands because that's what uh, King Leopold did with mm. the Congolese who didn't work. So... Um, these were things that were unimaginable when I was like in my twenties. That was yeah. um, so. So the, the discourse of the extreme right has become far more openly. Um, mm. It used to be they, they used to um, speak almost completely in dog whistles, and right now that there is um, a, an openness um, to what to a very racist discourse. Mm -hmm. It's because now that crisis is here, there's a desirable need to wolf whistle instead of dog whistle. Mm -hmm. You know, now they've done enough dog whistling. They've done dog whistling for a long time and they've cooked up a lot of hatred. Think about like the riots in the UK that occurred. Um, they have been creating like hysteria about like all sorts of made up stories and even like real crimes that happened because immigrants are impoverished and like crime does happen. It's like, you know, no one's fucking perfect, but they, they entirely in it up and making attacks, but not making a call for action until they knew eventually conservatism was going to collapse in parliament because it was just a train wreck for the last 10 years and they needed it to so that the right could operate outside as the, as the vilified in a, a way that makes them look like rebel heroes. So they waited until labor one and then um, this one, now, there was a crime actually committed by a group of immigrants that was a lot worse than the one they started this thing over and they didn't start anything over it. It was about two months before it. Uh, there was a gang raping um, in Manchester, I think it was. But um, I might be wrong there. And uh, they didn't start fucking riots across the country over it. But when there was a stabbing by someone who wasn't even Arabic, wasn't even a Muslim, he was actually a Christian, funnily enough, uh, given all these rioters and their positions. Um, they should go fucking torment the the Christians for it instead. Uh, but the um, <laughs> I knew you'd find that one funny. <laughs> but uh, the um, what's it? Uh, and, and it was um, what was it? it was, uh, uh, I think they were from. Were they from Trinidad? I think it might have been Trinidad. But they were like was... they were born. They were born in the UK, and they, so they started all this immigrant riots about someone who wasn't an immigrant, wasn't an mm. Arab, wasn't Islamic. And um, uh, what's it uh, was actually a, a Christian, which they were trying to claim this was all in the name of Christianity, that they're protecting their very Christian country and they're protecting their king. I don't know where that came from, but it was happening. Um, hmm. This whole situation was used as a as a crisis motion because then they create these waves of struggle and they get to pull the card of like, well, we're working people. We used to vote for labor. And they don't represent us anymore and then start listing all the fucking like uh, minorities that they hate, that they think labor actually cares about when labor is incredibly racist, incredibly transphobic, incredibly sexist. They probably get along better if they if they uh, spread out the differences. And it's a way to try and create further for fascist militancy. Mm. This reminds me of the uh, in 1210 in England. Somebody said that a Christian baby was killed by a Jewish man who used the blood to make Passover matzah bread with as a ritual, as a Jewish ritual. Oh, when in well, fact, uh, you know, well, that's not kosher, you know, like to say the least, you know. <laughs> so I uh, couldn't have been Jewish, you know, in the first place. So, and yet, and, and of course, you know, that led to the riots, you know, the, what were called pogroms. Uh, and eventually, and in, uh, in 1290, uh, the Jewish people were expelled from England as a result of that slander, just because of that, you know, 
can start with nothing, absolutely nothing. And that's what's happening in England right now. Yeah. Uh, I think that um, anti-Jewish bigotry, uh, maybe racism isn't an acronym, but, but really anti-Jewish organized hatred is far older than the, the blood libel uh, um, that was invented indeed. In, in, um, actually, yes. there are people who speculate that, that Christianity as we know it, the, the, the Constantine um, version, uh, diversion of uh, uh, Christianity, um, was actually constructed specifically to be anti-Jewish. Because yes. in the first century CE, um, Judaism was slightly different from the Judaism that we know now. It was a, quite a revolutionary uh, movement, not just Shabbat, the the the, um, the fact that, that they were quite against slavery. The, the whole um, foundational myth of Judaism was uh, a story about liberation from slavery. But also, they refused to bow down to the emperors. Of course, you had the many um, great uh, Jewish uprisings, both in Palestine and uh, in the diaspora. And the Roman Empire had a lot of trouble with these rebels. That's why they uh, tried to create a soft version that was um, uh, far more docile, far more domesticated. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that became Constantine Christianity. Mm -hmm. And this version of Christianity, as soon as it uh, got to power in the 4th century um actively started persecuting jewish people sometimes very harshly brutally with, with with physical violence sometimes with just ideological and and psychological violence but anti-jewish organized anti-jewish hatred um in europe has uh, is a thousand years older at least than the mm. blood libel mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh my okay um, it's just a, a strain, you know, to start thinking about all that again. I mean, what's it? There's a thing as well um, with the kind of like angle of blood libel as well that just kind of finds me funny, just from like a colloquial, not so like theoretical sense. And so like, have any of these people tried Jewish cuisine? Like, <laughs> did they, because like this whole idea that Jewish people go around like eating the blood of children and all that, that would taste horrible. Jewish food tastes nice. <laughs> like, like, you know, they got a tongue for, like, Simply nice quest. delicacy. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're going to be, like, ruining beautiful fucking dishes with horrible English people's fucking baby's blood. Like, fuck me. There is, like, enough filth on this planet without, like, subjecting people to the biology of the English. <laughs> the yeah. biomatter of the English. Henry Ford had a copy of the protocols of the elders of Zion on his desk. Yeah. Yes, he did. Yeah, he, and he wrote an American version of it as well, called the uh, International Jew or something. I have oh, a that was of it no, that was like that was uh, his newspaper. He had like a newspaper called the International Jew, and he just used oh, yes. to publicate mm -hmm. all sorts of stuff in it. Yeah. And he published the uh, the proclamations of the elders of Zion in it as like a whole like oh, like uh, uh -huh. newspaper. Uh, well, yeah, okay. But um, talking about the Flemish, you know, like it reminded me of, first of all, Zionism. <laughs> the Flemish, you know, are very sort of Zionistic in their methodology and in their thinking. So, um, reminds me of the Ulster lot. <laughs> the what? what? Ulster. 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 Oh, yes. oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Is that very Zionist, you know? You know, like they want to be. They want to be in like uh, it's a little different because like um, it's also with the British, like they kind of want to be independent from the British, but they also don't <laughs> like they can't make yeah. their mind up. You got like the Ulster nationalists who think they could actually go their own way and um, have this insane idea of becoming um, essentially a little Israel on there because they know that they're, they're like they're hoping that Protestantism will be a big enough protection for them, mm -hmm. forgetting that. Um, the British actually tried to like give Ireland back three times in the last like 60 years. Uh, they don't want Ulster. They just also don't want the conflict that will be caused by Ulster. They're kind of sick of the like, look, we have a colony. Look at us. We're an empire that's kind of like shining on the British and making them look bad. Uh, mm. Also, the militarism is just not great for internal stability, which the bourgeoisie and the imperial core favor mm. more than anything. And then you have the Ulster loyalists who don't support the British government and don't want anything to do with them. 
but they they are loyal as shit to the king. They see the king as like the chosen by God, you know, holier than thou. Okay. Uh, uh, they're religiously devout. And um, so they all follow the British government because the king rules it and nothing else. Okay. Uh, and Monarchist. so there is like oh. a conflict. There's a conflict that emerges there where you have these like Ulster, like nationalist separatists that they just want like to go the most brutal fascist route out of here. And uh, some of them even want to try and like create some sort of federation with the Irish Free State. Hmm. Well, but they don't want to be dissolved into it. They don't want to become a part of the Free State because that would be a, a loss to them. They see Ulster as a separate nation from Ireland. Ah, oh, yes. This, uh, uh, f f not from what I have experienced myself, but I've experienced some of the follows from it. But, you know, Quebec used to be, you know, like uh, Walloon, you know, and it was, you know, very reactionary, you know, dominated by the Catholic Church, who had their own prime minister there, you know, Maurice Duplessis. And uh, at that time, you know, you know, the Quebecois in the country, you know, they were taught by the church, that Jews had horns, you know, horns, you know, and they would even go and ask, you know, some Jewish people if they could see their horns, you know, this is what happened in Quebec at that time. Okay, that was Quebec. But it got transformed. And now we have this socialist party, which is not a social democratic party, which is not a revolutionary socialist party, but it's a socialist party, even though they don't call themselves socialists. But, you know, everybody in the party is a socialist, you know, so, and they're called Quebec Solidaire, and they've got 10 seats in the National Assembly now. And they are bigger than the right nationalist. Well, not right nationalists. The right nationalists are in power. They are the government, PAC party. But there's another party, which is sort of center-left, Parti Québécois, which is part of the Quiet Revolution that took place. They got rid of the Catholic Church. And... You know, the Quebec Solidaire is bigger than they are. <laughs> you know, like uh, this is the transformation that Quebec has gone through. So, you know, any such, you know, nationality, no matter how reactionary, can go through a revolutionary transformation, first of all. Secondly, the second point about the Walloons. Okay, so they have a Germanic, you know, dialect that they speak. And so they find that it's similar, you know, to the Germanic dialect that's spoken by the, the German Nederlandish uh, mention. Okay. So they think that they can form their own ethnicity in their own state or something like that, you know, because they are one people. And they are also German, so they could end up, you know, like uniting with, you know, great Germany or something like that, you know, like this all makes sense to them. I mean, they're but, low Germans, so they might might have some issues yeah. with Hochdeutsch. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, okay. Now, if we follow that train of logic that, you know, all the Germanic-speaking peoples, you know, should be united in a great Germany and form a great nation, sovereign, that would dominate Europe, okay? Then how come me, an East German, East Ear European uh, uh, Jewish population, were not considered to be part of this great German nation? Because oh. we are Germanic. Yiddish is a dialect of German, Mittelhochdeutsch, yeah. Mittelhochdeutsch, from the Rhine but, Valley. You know, like how more German can you get than that? You know, Rhine Valley. And yet, but, 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 you know, their definition of nation is not by ethnicity, even. Not by language, as Herder tried. It is by religion. Christianity is the determining characteristic of the nation that they call, you know, the Germanic you know, nation or culture. And what that's they mean the same for Germany. That's the same yes. problem Germany has itself. Yes. Germany that's, splits that's... between the low and the high Germans, and then not alike. <laughs> uh -huh. I mean, they're similar. They're, they're both Germanians, but like, okay, you know, like are the Galicians in like Northwest Spain the same as the Irish? Because the Irish came from Galicia. So, like, oh. you know. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay. But we can see that. Their definition, you know, the bourgeois definition of nation is a religious definition because they define it as a nation state. Even Trump said so in his acceptance speech for the nomination. He said, we are one nation, we are one faith. And you know what faith he's talking about. One nation under is, God. That's it. And the same thing, you know, the Zionists use the same methodology. And they use the religion in the same way, even though they're not religious. <laughs> I'm an atheist. Now let me tell you about how this land belongs to me because God told me so. Yeah. 
Well, at but, least that's what they think that is written down in the Torah, in the, right, in, um, in the Bereshit, in, in Genesis. But that's not really what's written there. You know, if you I, go back there, <laughs> you know, you find... the beat, Red Wasp. You know, the I, I would like covenant to make... with Abraham, you know, was completely different than what the Zionists claim it to be. Yeah. Anyway. I, I would like to make one remark, um, because... Um, it used to be so that the, the, the Germanic fascists excluded the Jewish people. But mm. now, since the, the, the foundation of the Zionist colony and since they have a stake uh, in pretending not to be anti-Semitic, uh, they yeah. have become philo -Semites. And it, yes. it's a well-known Yiddish uh, saying that philo is uh, or a philo -Semite is so, uh, an anti-Semite who loves Jews. So yes. they, they have... They, they have uh, they still have the same essentialism, but right now, um, as long as there is this Zionist colony that they want to defend, as long as they have um, these uh, colonial interests there. And it, it is really the, the strongest defenders of the Zionist entity here in my country are, let's say, the, the two wings of the, 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 the Flemish fascist party, like the, the, the hardcore right. fascist and the light version of the fascist. Right. They are the ones who um, who are the best friends of uh, the 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 jewish bourgeoisie in antwerp uh, they are the ones um of course the jewish bourgeoisie who claims to represent all the jewish people here in belgium because the bourgeoisie always represents all the people um that's the, that they've been doing that for years um yeah but it, it, it's really and also in the, well. the, the 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 worst um zionists are uh, the heirs of the, the, the Nazi parties, uh, those who mm -hmm. were actually um, helping to organize the, the, the extermination of Jewish people 80 years ago, are now the ones who claimed to be um, pro-Jewish because they uh, support this colony. Eichmann was a Zionist. He even went to visit Palestine. That's yes. it. So it's fun you've mentioned that. So um, in the UK, we, I've seen some code switching because, um, as as you mentioned, uh, though it wasn't the main part of your parcel, you mentioned a very important key point in it, and that is the, um, you know, Zion Zionism is coded with anti-Semitism, even from the people who are actually Jewish, let alone yeah. from these white folk that are doing it. And mm -hmm. what you see with the folk them from Nazism and all that, they be like fucking... Uh, you know, coming at it from this fucking like uh, opportunistic angle. I mean, they also like Israel because it suits them. They don't like Jewish people. Um, they like nationalism. They respect anyone, even people. I've, I've seen this from Nazis and fascists. Even people they want to eradicate, they'll actually show some like sign of, I don't know if respect is the right word because they still want to eradicate them, but like some sense of like specifically respect the concept that they are like nationalistic or that they are, are like ethno-nationalist segregationists anything that is like awful because to them it's it's them behaving more like the white people so they've done good in that in their eyes um and so uh because the, the um these people aren't always like biological reductionists they're like uh thomas jefferson types and they're uh fucking um uh, what's it, Andrew Jackson types who go on about like whiting the native stuff like that? Like they see whiteness as this thing that can be uh, enforced onto people, but that all of those other people will be lesser white people than the OG, and that's where biological reductionism comes in again. The code switching I was on about because I kind of paced, <laughs> I, I pre prefaced a bit too big there. Um, the code switching. Um, so, um, have you ever heard of the Knights Templar International? No, this is not a conspiracy theory. Let me please clarify. This is a UK fascist organization. Please take me seriously. <laughs> Sorry, jokes aside, but they're a real organization. They're run by a guy called Jim Dysel. Uh, mm -hmm. I might be butchering his name. His name's an awkward one to say. He's an Ulster Scot, and uh, he was a supporter of the UVF. Um, uh, Ulster Volunteer Force, for those that might not be as clued in with the the uh the long war or the troubles if you want to use the anglo name for it but why the fuck did you do that um but the uh fucking... <laughs> um but what's it 
he was speaking on a on a live stream from these like 19 year old kids that were getting into right wing stuff. This guy's like 70 and he goes on these things. Now, he's associated with the BN well, was associated with the BNP. They've all left now. All the really big radicals left the BNP. And he was also involved with the EDL. Tommy Robinson is partly his project. Um, and the EDL is a Zionist institution that's mm -hmm. recently came out, but it's also been like really acquirable public knowledge for a long time. Um, he has been pushing to these, like he's on this stream with these kids and he turns around to them and he is just like, yo, like, um, you know, uh, I, I, like the, they go on about like they, they're saying all sorts of anti-Semitic shit and other stuff like that and like rather than him like doing what you see some of them usually do where they try and act like yo we're not anti-Semites anymore in the British right they're being kind of mostly about it where they're getting really anti-Semitic while dancing around it and sort of so what instead he says was he's like hold on to that thought those are not necessarily incorrect ideas, but we have a bigger enemy, a bigger problem that we share a common alliance with the Jewish people on. And that is the enemy of Islam. And he treats Islam as a race in this. He actually tries to like essentially pull this idea that Islam is like all of the ways that like um, the, the ethno um, religious relationship Judaism has and other stuff like that um, is what they are. And then all the stereotypes around it, um, the racial stereotypes, bloodlet and other stuff like that. Now bloodlet and actually was used to target Muslim people a long time ago. Uh, um, Cause uh, in the Spanish Christendom, uh, they targeted Arab peoples along with Jewish peoples as being in collaboration to harm Christian children. Uh, and that was one of the ways that they pushed for the uh, complete like uh, extermination for people, for, for, uh, for people in villages. But mm -hmm. yeah, so that's the thing is that with the British, they're like, yo, hold on to that. We still need you to be anti-Semitic to the Jewish people in the future, but be anti-Semitic to the Arab people first. And we're going to just call them Muslims because we also want you to attack Pakistani people, which I mean, if you know anything about the UK is a massive target for hate in this country, um, because it's also about the racial dynamic. You do tend to see a lot more Dalit people from Pakistan uh, over here. While in from India, it's usually Hindi people. Dalit Indians get called Pakis in this country. Mm. And so like there is that kind of relationship going on here where the British order without even needing to be told the Indian caste system automatically apply it in a way a fucking a Hindi would. Mm. Mm. OK, the world's fucked up. Yeah, <laughs> it's basically every time I open my mouth, yeah. you figure out more about how fucked up this world is. <laughs> yeah, I everywhere. One of one of the things um, that you said uh Ever since the, the, the 7th century, especially ever since the, 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 the 10th, 11th century, there have been two targets of anti-Semitism. There have been two kinds of Jewish people. The, the internal Jewish people in Europe, the real Jewish people who already lived there, and then the new Jewish people being the Muslims. But all the tropes that have been used against Jewish people have oh. all been mobilized for over a thousand years against Muslims. And right now... Um, because uh, the, the the Western imperialism has a stake in uh, the, the 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 Zionist colony, and they have to somehow, on a performative level, um, pretend not to be anti-Semitic anymore. Um, that's why today it is mostly the 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 Muslim uh, population that is uh, being targeted with all these typical anti-Semitic tropes like blood libel, like uh, dual national, uh, dual. Uh, 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 um, Loyalty, loyalty, like uh, uh, the fact, uh, of course, you know, I'm a Muslim, so everything I say can be a lie because everybody knows that um, we have this uh, uh, dogma, which is called taqiyya, which means that I can just lie to all the infidels, which is a, a completely <laughs> stupid idea that can only come uh, out of the brain of somebody who is looking for a way to discredit uh, um, uh, 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 groups of people. So, but all these also, ideas, everything that, that, that we call Islamophobia today, all these tropes, you can find them back in the history of anti-Semitism. Yeah, 
I mean, also with like Islam and like preaching, telling the truth requires justification because the whole point of being a preacher of the Lord is that you try and preach to the truth. Like it's kind of like a really, really big thing about like Islam. It's why Islam says that if people don't want to become Muslims, that's fine. That's their choice. Like if they're good people in life, We'll see him. We'll see him up there, and if not, well, then they'll get the punishment that they got for going down the pathways that they went. Like you, you know, it, it, you don't need to be a, a Muslim to necessarily find salvation. Well, you do, but being a Muslim doesn't mean being like um, o- o- always being necessarily someone who's in a devout faith. It means someone who has made the necessary commitments to life, and that's why I remember being told by uh, an Islamic comrade. That as a disabled person, unless I was to commit like awful crimes, I pretty much got a ticket up to heaven because my existence fortitudes me as someone of being born of struggle for life. And that is one of the prerequisites of that sort of devotion. I wouldn't see it that way. I think I need to do a little more good with my life than someone like that. But I'm not a believer. So it's like, you know, it's even, I'm a part of that. But yeah, I, I love that part of Islam. It's kind of a lot more inviting. Uh, uh, that disabled people are not just kind of treated as this like tokenized thing. They actually respect that we struggle really hard to exist like uh, other people and that our lives aren't just like the Christians do where they treat it as some like tokenization. We have a gift from God and, and other weird crap like that. And it's like, yeah. Ooh. Well, we haven't heard from Andrew. Andrew, what's happened uh, this past week in uh, your area? What's going on? Has the, uh, the pat- what do they call themselves? The Patriotic Front or something or other there? Have they come visiting or what? Patriot Front. Yeah, Patriot Front. Have they come knocking on the door or something? They haven't shown their faces, but uh, in my town anyway, but in Nashville, the capital of, the, of our state, they did. Yeah. you. I, I remember you saying that there was a, a gathering of them, of 200 or 500 of them. 500 uh, were they armed or or partially armed they were partially armed yes ah okay um, yeah it, that's it when we're talking about forming a united front for defense yeah has there been any uh any uh organizing has there been sort of any reaction you know to uh to the patriot front there are people getting it together or what? There's been so, like very little organizing, but there has been a little bit. I won't lie. Okay. Well, this is start. something. Yeah. Like, something I'm looking forward to the really students. Uh, the students are coming back, you know, so they could have uh, a say in this as well. You know, not I mean, only uh, against uh, genocide in Gaza, but against. Uh, potential genocide in the United States of America from the Patriot Front. Yeah. Get to get, uh, get yourselves organized there. Yeah. Yeah. Some I'm, organizing can very fact, quickly turn into a lot of organizing. In fact, I'm getting armed myself mm. with a knife. I've got myself about a 10-inch knife. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I'm going to get myself an AK-4. 74. Mm-hmm. I that wouldn't be an advisable firearm. Five four five ammunition is hard to get in the United States. It's very wow. very expensive. Might, get something I might, I might with get, Then I might get a Luger or something. Yeah, something to defend yourself. You know, because it's coming. I mean, when I hear Luger, do you mean like a POA? A POA, yes. Yeah. I, What's it? It's I get a vintage firearm if you want to collect something, but if you want something to defend yourself, I love older guns, trust me, but get something more modern. Get an AR-15, get a Glock, or something like that. Get something practical, something that you can fire straight. Like, you can't be, because a Desert Eagle will blow your wrist to smithereens if you don't know how to hold it properly. Yeah. Yeah, no, that that thing's a 50 caliber auto pistol. You want, like, something that's either a 40 cal or a nine millimeter like a nine oh, millimeter yeah. is going to be cheap and affordable ammo but 40 caliber is going to have extra stopping power it depends on which one you want also you get a bigger magazine with nine millimeter 
Yeah, no, 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 that's wait, am I the one in America or are you the one in America? <laughs> wait wait, wait a second. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm, in, I'm in Belgium. I, I think I once shot an air rifle, never shot a real gun. So I'm not an expert <laughs> on that. But I do oh. think that guns alone is not enough. You, you need yeah. comrades. You need a community. Because one person with a gun, if you kill this one person, then... You don't get shot by 10 more. <laughs> they're organized so absolutely yeah, yeah. Well, i have some yeah. uh material that i've uh come across this week that i put up on my facebook page you know because i have five thousand people following that so i, I want to show you especially the uh, assassination the murder of a comrade this is uh aisha aisenur uh, both a uh, Turkish and American uh, citizen volunteering at a demonstration in Beta, the village of Beta, and she was shot in the head and killed. You know, oh, that man. means uh, intentional assassination. I've been demonstrating at Beta. I have my videos from Beta as well as the other towns around there. And, uh, you know, I myself, even though, you know, identify, you know, to the soldiers as being Jewish and, and try to sort of, you know, knock their indoctrination apart. I still got shot twice. <laughs> you know, I got shot in the leg, you know, with a rubber bullet, and I still have the cavity in the in the in the bone there that I that I'm feeling right now. A little cavity still there in the bone. They were trying to break my leg. Another time, I got hit by the uh, an exploding uh, gas grenade that had a top that flew off this metal piece, you know, that hit me in the chest. That could have hit me in the face easily enough. And I have the video of that happening live, and that's on my YouTube channel as well. And now they've killed a third volunteer after Rochelle Corey, who was killed in 2003 in Rafa, and after they killed Tom Herdville, who was my friend, my comrade, who I worked with just before he was killed when he went to Rafa. And we worked in the Balada refugee camp in Nablus in 2003. After the assassination of Rochelle Corey, 10 of us came, mostly from Europe, to make up for the loss of uh, Rochelle Corey. And at the end of our two weeks, you know, fighting off the military in the Bladder refugee camp there, who had set up a barricade at the entrance to the Market Street that we took away, that I have some photos of. And, you know, I asked him where he was going, what he was going to do after, you know, we were finished. And he said he was going to Rafa. And I said, that's dangerous. And he said, I know. And then he was killed. And that was Tom Hurdle. He died of and now, revolutionary brethren, though, like hardcore to the bone, love and yeah. solidarity. May he rest in power. Like, yeah, goddamn. he was a photographer and you know, he wanted to do you know what he could. And now we have uh, Aisha Aysenur, and this is her photo right here. Could I say one thing to that, though? Photographers, that's the main reason we have any idea what World War II looked like was war photographers. Like the reason that like war is so publicized today was because of the war photographers of World War Two. They kind of changed the whole game. And photographers who have been keeping an eye on Palestine for so long are the reason uh -huh. why we yeah. got decades of photos being like uncovered by loads of people now because people are getting eyes on Palestine more than they ever have in the yeah. last at least Very 30 important. years yeah yeah this is proof and, that it's um, happening you know otherwise they can they will deny everything you know but now everyone's digging up all those photos and uh, uh about like 150 odd years worth of photos from uh from Jerusalem in Palestine have mm -hmm. been coming out and yeah yeah and those photos they prove that there was a society there there was a culture there was a people there there was a Palestine there you know where Zionists claim that there was a, a desert well not true okay here is janine you know because it's interesting because fight... that's not the way the british described it so the zionists oh, yeah, might well, want to <laughs> yeah, the british were a tad more honest about it all you know because they had to prove to their constituency that they were that they got some you know valuable property there you know they shouldn't give up okay well anyway that's here's the british really. yeah here's janine you know where uh the, the zionist military has been giving them the gaza treatment and they've been destroying you know like uh, as much infrastructure as they can, and they've been killing uh, various militants uh, about uh, 20 a week. And now, since October the 7th, there's been like 625 Palestinians have been killed, not in Gaza, but in the West Bank. 
because the Intifada is, is happening now in the West Bank and the repression of the Intifada is happening as well. So here's where, you know, the bulldozers, you know, dug up the street and now the Palestinian bulldozers are coming in and filling it in, you know, and fixing up, you know, all the damage that was done, you know, to Jenin. And they did it, you know, within uh, 48 hours, you know. So this is a photo showing, you know, the resilience and determination of the Palestinian people. I mean, what's it? To do the devil's advocate, um, I, you know, surely they're only in there because Hamas is in the West Bank, right? Right? Oh, yeah. That's the initial <laughs> reason. Yeah, yeah. I remember something about destroying Hamas, you know? Yeah. That's the only reason, you know, for, you know, violence is necessary, you know, because, you know, violence was used against us. So, oh, my, you know, but. The West oh, Bank, you know, like, what are God. they doing in Sector A? You know, that's Sector A inside the city. You know, that's Sector A, you know, where the military is not supposed to be, according to the Oslo agreements. So you know? the PLO is just Hamas now, you see. They transformed, like, all of a sudden, overnight. Oh, yeah, no. Someone fed them after midnight, and they turned into Hamas. Okay. I think as part of a Zionist conspiracy theory, um, they're, they're called Hamas. So you, you shouldn't say Hamas, but Hamas. Um, oh, I Okay. Somehow, and, 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 and people don't usually see the irony, but um, this is what happens when European people try to speak a medieval, uh, 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 a Middle Eastern Oriental. language, a Semitic yeah. language, and yeah. they they have no real idea how to pr pronounce some of the basic sounds, like the ha, which was, uh, the het the used to be pronounced uh, almost the same way as the ha in uh, Arabic. Uh -huh. um, but uh, they lost it, and they they all made it the ch. Yeah. So yeah. right now you have the the chaf and the the the, the chet, which are almost uh, the same, uh, mm. but that's just because they're they're not uh, 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 native speakers of a Semitic language. They reinvented a conlang that um, looks quite a lot like uh, the, the 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 old uh, holy language of the Bible, but that is actually substantially different. Yes, it also yes. has a, a very European, Indo-Germanic, Indo-European uh, uh, grammar uh, structure. Um. Mm, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, uh, Hamas, you know, is uh, much like the, uh, the Yiddish uh, uh, as well, like Hummus. Yes. You know, like, mm -hmm. Also, yeah, um, yeah. in the pronunciation of uh, Chaza, Gaza, it should be yeah. Chaza. Yeah. You know, Chaza. it should be a G-H-A-Z-A. -A. You know, G A Z A is just English. You know, that's not the real name. Yeah. Yeah. And and the, yeah, the British, the, you know, have taken this, you know, like, yeah. And, <laughs> and, and, and in British uh, colonialism, you know, there's a very famous example of uh, Burma. Burma is Myanmar. You know, mm -hmm. but still, some people calling Myanmar Burma because that's what the British called it. You know, for some reason or other. Well, know? there is some like weird complications because apparently it was also called Burma, and Myanmar was actually come up with by some weird right winger who banned people driving on the left side of the road because he thought it would turn the country communist. So I don't know. Okay. Like, I have not actually researched into this, but I'm just saying like there's. It's a complicated discussion, and I think like a lot of people like just kind of make an open presumption when uh, Myanmar has had no stability since it got away from the British, like ever at all. Like it's been dominated by fascists, British puppets, uh, oh, American yeah, puppets, uh, and then Chinese out a puppets now. against the Rohingya, Rohingya, I think they're pronounced. Rohingya. Yeah, Rohingya. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the uh, Chinese uh, government. Yeah, they've escaped in exile into uh, Bangladesh, which is flooded now. And Bangladesh itself is having its big problems. There so was now they're so trying to carry out a counter-revolution there after the young people have and have uh, gotten rid of the previous government. They're trying to impose a government. Like in France, they're trying to impose a prime minister, you know, from a right-wing party after the left-wing party won the election, basically. You know, like this yeah. is all, yeah. Okay, so this is also from my Facebook here. I love this image. And uh, here's uh, African history. Here's the CNT photo. Nice in color. I don't know who that character is in the painting. But anyway. Oh, here's the, uh, the Afri African American woman at the time, named African American woman, who actually you know, brought about the American space program, which wouldn't have been able to succeed without her without her calculations based upon the Euler equations, which she uh, rediscovered. Oh yeah, here's this guy. He's pretty fancy. Okay, 
Uh, yeah. Now here, France is becoming very oppressive, you know, not only with respect to the government, you know, but people returning from uh, volunteering in Palestine, you know, are getting hit. And so she's being put into prison. And then there's the uh, founder of uh, Telegram, which has good encryption, has just been arrested as well in France. Now, here is London, uh, London. Uh, and uh, it's claimed that there's one million people at the demonstration here. Yeah, no, I was going to go to this, but my health needs fucking, I, I need an operation. Doesn't look like money. they needed your the presence there. <laughs> they no, they don't, million. they don't. But goddamn, is the fucking energy there amazing. And I already got political connections with a, a, a Pakistani politician the last time I went down there, or is oh. a really really fucking love the Giza. He, he visited Birmingham recently, so he took me out for dinner. That was uh -huh. like a month or two ago. Mm -hmm. Um and uh yeah, no, it was a national demo, which is what that one is there as well. Um yeah, they're keeping the numbers up. Um Birmingham yeah. hasn't been so lively unfortunately. It's kind of getting me worried about the area. Okay. Well it'll come back, you know, because I think you know with the uh execution of the uh, volunteer Aisha, I think that people are going to begin to take this seriously once again and settle, decide that this has to be settled by extra parliamentary means. Now here's uh, Nasser speaking in English, giving his, you know, breakdown of what Zionism is. Excellent, excellent, you know, piece here. We don't have the uh, audio that I can give to you. It was muted. Uh, I like this uh, mural. If not now, then when? You know, uh, this is the uh, the Jewish uh, anti-Zionist uh, younger generation uh, movement that's happening in the in the USA right now. Using I this. love the way they've written that. That is such a yeah. fucking dope way to write it. Like the yeah, fucking yeah. shifting. Yeah, yeah. That's art. That is. Oh yes, this is Tolstoy. To destroy war, destroy patriotism. Okay. Uh, by the way, from him in a long time. And Tolstoy um, uh, is one of the people who is a very good uh, counterexample that shows that not all forms of Christianity are reactionary. Yes. He was oh, uh, an anar anarcho communist, but he was also um, deeply religious and deeply Christian. Yes. And uh, Oriental Christianity is not the same as Western Christianity at all. Oriental Christianity is in the tradition of Judaism and Islam. It is a uh, um, a, a universal right. uh, consciousness, whereas well, what uh, is made of Christianity in the West is not a universalist at all. You know, it's like uh, it's you know like and 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 then on top of you know being just Western, you know, along come the Protestants in the in the Reformation period, and they each decide they're going to have their own religion, you know, their own national religion. Start off with Luther, you know, in Germany, and then Calvin, and then. Uh, uh, and then the Huguenots in France, and then in England, it was the Anglicans and the United States, you know, like you have a whole list of Protestants, you know, like who think that they are the ones who are the superior Protestants in the uh, in God we trust type of mentality for the United States. Um, so it's, it's, it's completely different. You know, I want to emphasize that point that you've made. Yeah. yeah. But um I wouldn't divide it that way because um, the Christian orthodoxy of Europe very much is just yeah. like the Christians of the West. Like, and their unity of amongst themselves is around being like diabolically reactionary, like uh, pa patronage and patriarchal domination in those regions is even worse than it is uh, in Western Christianity. I would divulge it as Middle Eastern and or West Asian and African uh, orthodoxy has a tendency to be a little more like Judaism and Islam, but yes, Eastern yes. European orthodoxy is just Catholicism. It's just extra steps. Uh -huh. At least yeah. Russian orthodoxy supports Palestine. You know? mm, yes. So there's so there's so the country that is led by the Russian Orthodox Church is doing what to stop its trade with Israel. Uh -huh. Yeah, well, the but, supporting uh, Palestine is not something that you can do in words. It is done in deeds. 
Yeah. Like, yeah. Russia is an imperialist fucking power. If it wanted to fucking stop the war with Palestine, it would have fucking done it already. Same it with China. would intervene there, yeah. But, you know, what's notable is this trend of uh, Protestantism, you know, to set up its own national religious, you know, foundation of a nation state concept. This is exactly what is happening in Ukraine. They actually split the Orthodox Church in order to create a Ukrainian church. And in a in order to assert its, you know, justify and, and sanctify, you know, its national chauvinism and its a murderous campaign, you know, against the uh, Russian speaking Ukrainians of the Donbass, which are no longer uh, under the control of Kyiv. I think that uh, that's pretty well settled there. What's uh, going mean, to be settled, is, you know, as well as the Kursk a... intervention. But I think that. Russia will be constrained you know, not to cross over the uh, what's it called the Dnepro the River. There, they're going to stop at the borders, you know, of what is uh, Donbass, and this will not turn into uh, a full-blown imperialist campaign. Uh, I mean, what well, is it? What do you think about that? But Cara? what is a church but an institution of power? Like, what, yeah. what, when we look at like the Catholic Church splitting off, I don't think we would disagree that it was progressive for the protestants to split from the catholic church i think we would just agree that it's questionable how far they actually split from it compared to the base of the protestant mm. reformation that wanted to actually part drastically from catholicism the the leaders of power they just wanted to like unleash like the horde to capitalism and like turn mm. the people who were oppressed by uh catholicism as monks to be uh, you know like fucking locked away from society and kept inside like fucking you know never known anywhere they were thrown straight into work in in uh foundries building cannons for, for, for king henry's uh naval fleet so like that that was the the earliest start inklings of what would soon in 150 200 years become the proletariat the um uh, the so like if we look at these siblings yeah i mean they had opportunistic means but you are going to want to get away from being dominated by any patriarchal structural system of feudalism because that's what these things are there are uh, hierarchies that use religious faith to counter up what is essentially just the class system you know they're the clergy uh mm -hmm. and the clergy can go to hell mm -hmm. the, 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 there is something we, I, I think in every religion, um, every religion that is big enough to 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 have um, some people following it, you have um, both of the, the 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 class positions are present. I, I call this the dialectics of recuperation and reclaiming. Like um, Judaism has been recuperated by the bourgeoisie, Christianity has been recuperated by first the feudal landlords and the bourgeoisie. The same happened with. Um, Wait a minute, I get another call. Yep. So right. um, uh, I, um, I have to call somebody. I'll be back in, uh, uh, in a few uh, minutes. Let's finish now, you know, because I think <clears throat> we've had a, you know, a great session here, you know, the Convergence Forum. And now we're covering, you know, such immense territories, you know, that we uh, can demonstrate. This is a demonstration that we can come to a common conclusion about the major mm -hmm political questions of the time from so many different cultures, which would tend to reinforce the validity of our conclusions, you know, because if we can come to it from four different directions at the same time, then there must be a substantial amount of truth, you know, to be held here. And so I congratulate you and us, you know, for being able to uh, develop this uh, convergence form and we'll continue every week. Okay, see you again next week then. Okay.